All right, who the fuck did I marry? Part two. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. We both had established we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. We were not trying to be friends with benefits and none of that. Um, so the, the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed, we joked, we talked about people, which, um, <laughs> is kind of up my alley, my sense of humor. It was just, it was a good vibe. So at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. I don't know the name of the song by the t well by the time this video posts I will put the name at the bottom I can't remember the song I just remember that John Legend was talking about I think I met my wife tonight and I thought it was a sign so I was like oh my god so anyway we ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about midnight so during this conversation, he again is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, how he went out there, he went to San Diego State, he played football for San Diego State. Um, he talked about how, you know, life, he loved it out there, so he stayed. Um, that's when he joined the company. Um, and then he explained that he also did arena football but only did it for about two or three years he claims that while he was doing arena football the team that he was on won a championship but again keep in mind i don't know anything about arena football so i was like okay i didn't know that they had championships and he was like you know he got a little offended like yeah they got championships and you know he was on that team so he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. He worked um, something in the IT area of Apple, but it was in the store. Again, it was one of those, it's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon, I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it, why? So we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife. It's because I asked. He was not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex a lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time, somebody I worked with. That will come back later. Um, and he seemed real cool about it. He was like, you know, that was before me and blah, blah, blah. Um, so the conversation was good. Midnight comes and um, I go home. Yes, I went home. We ended up talking, talking, and talking. Mind you, our first date was March 7th. And within about two and a half weeks, Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked every day. We went out again at Red Lobster. Um, I don't even, I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue was, where are we going to quarantine? So the question was, are we going to quarantine at his place? Which he had like a studio type of situation like it clearly where he was staying um i was like it's like a studio apartment but he kept telling me like this is temporary because i'm looking for a house like he showed me he showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company where she was out on maternity leave but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house so i was just like okay this is definitely temporary like he's not trying to stay here long term and she was apologizing in the email i'm so sorry you know this should have been taken care of before you got here but it wasn't da 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 da, da. i saw the email i saw the email i read it i read the email um so the decision was 
are you we're going to quarantine at the studio or we're going to quarantine in my house first mistake i made well there's a lot but this was a mistake i made so ladies caution moment during one of our dates um because keep in mind in those two weeks we were seeing each other quite a bit um nothing physical or anything like that just two people who were who i thought were really on some all right let's see if this is going if this if this is going to grow into something he came to my house when he came to my house i had a three bedroom two and a half bath townhome he was in his studio now i'm telling you guys all of this in in order of how it happened so some t- some things i'm probably going to insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. Can I turn this off? No. Okay, I still need that. Um, and I say that to say that I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh shit, she's a keeper. She got this three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse and I'm in like a little studio. Yeah, let me, let me, let me go ahead and pursue this. What I need to do to quarantine here. The decision was made quarantine at my house. So we, the state went on lockdown. He came and stayed with me um, in my home. And for the most part, be, in the initial beginning, it was fine. It was, it was fine. The reason why I hesitate is because I grew up in the church. So for me, it was really like an internal struggle of, bruh, you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband. And now you living with a dude and he ain't your husband. Like it was, it was a struggle for me because I knew better and I, and don't come for me. I'm just telling you the way I grew up, it was like that. It was not sitting right with me, but at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not want to. So there we go. Um, So he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. He paid the rent because my rent at the time was less than a thousand dollars. He paid the utility bills. And, on, and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, I was like, wow, okay, so you got money. Um, <laughs> and so he paid, he paid all the household bills. So my check really was just taking care of me, myself, and I. And I am not, this is where it's not going to make me look good, but it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills it was a wonderful feeling and so i kind of pushed to the side the fact that yeah you shacking up because it's like but your page you don't have to worry right now like he's he's taking care of all of april's bills before april even comes because this was still march so we're living together and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, he's helping to cook and clean, and then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him, or is he going to buy a house where it's for us? Because we are going to try to make this thing work, be official, get married, have a family. So the question now on the table is, what are we going to do? Because I didn't want to stay in um, Riverdale, Georgia. I did not want to raise a family there. I refused to have a baby um, in Clayton County. So the decision was made. Let's start looking for a house for both of us. Remember, he was already looking for a house for him. But then he was like, you know what? We're together. I plan to marry you. Let's look for a, for a, a family home for the two of us he was like this is how much i was approved for that's when he showed me the chase paperwork um it was a letter stating that he and it had the chase emblem at the top he showed me a letter stating that he was approved for seven hundred 